Hi, this is Saul Marcus, naturopathic doctor, and I'm going to be giving a presentation on resolving chronic candida infections. What I'd first like to do is ask anyone watching this if any of the following applies to them. Um, the first one is that you have been on the candida diet for months or even years, but if you cheat just once, then your symptoms come right back. Or perhaps you have tried many different types of candida um, supplements, candida detox plans, and these actually could help um, symptoms a lot. But nonetheless, at the end of the day, you still have candida and have to continue going on chronically treating candida. Of course, probiotics are very popular and they do help. But maybe perhaps you find that for your candida, probiotics don't help, or you must continue to megadose on them in order to keep candida in check. Or maybe you have your favorite candida supplements, and you take it religiously, and it keeps candida away, but if you stop taking these, the candida comes right back. Or conversely, there are some people who are so afraid to take candida supplements because they just make you feel so horrible that you just kind of go on with candida and you can't even treat it. So not all of those scenarios are going to apply to everyone with candida, but there are many people who at least fall into one of those categories. So this presentation is really for people who have candida, have tried to do lots of different things for it, yet the problem persists. I will be covering what candida is, what symptoms does it cause, why do so many people do all the right things for candida, yet the problem persists, and then I will outline a more comprehensive holistic program for stubborn cases. Candida albicans is usually a benign yeast that lives in the digestive tract. And this is going to be a big point that I mentioned over and over again that, you know, having some candida is pretty normal. Um, the issue is when it gets out of control and overgrowth happens. And this overgrowth leads to numerous symptoms which disrupt the immune system function, digestive function, and has other far reaching effects. So to go over all the symptoms of candida, um, first there can be fatigue, low energy, malaise, low libido. People are just not going to feel good. Um, often people will say they feel like they're drunk, although you might just feel tired. Um, gastrointestinal symptoms as it lives in the um, gastrointestinal tract. Thrush is a very severe presentation where it's actually living in the mouth. Uh, more typically, you'll see bloating, gas, intestinal cramps, rectal itching, altered bowel function, maybe diarrhea, maybe constipation. The rule when it comes to how candida or other sorts of dysbiotic organisms are uh, cause digestive symptoms is there really is no rule. One person might present with constipation, someone else with diarrhea, there might be gas, there might not be gas, or there might be candida without even any gastrointestinal symptoms. But when you do see those symptoms, you have to consider is there a candida overgrowth. Genitourinary symptoms, vaginal yeast infections are very common, but also on frequent bladder infections. Any type of chronic condition that I see going on within the genital urinary um, area, candida is going to be a consideration. There are a whole host of nervous system symptoms, depression, irritability, poor concentration, and anxiety. Um, if someone comes in to my office and their chief complaint is anxiety, if their history leads towards um, looking for digestive function and candida, I will go in that direction. Candida just doesn't make people tired. It can really you know, cause these emotional states, whether it's depression or anxiety. So you don't want to end up taking you know, psychiatric medications, SSRIs, benzodiazepines, or anything like that, when the root problem really is a candida infection. And this is a huge problem because if you someone goes to a psychiatrist for anxiety, the psychiatrist is likely not going to consider candida. This is not to say that candida is the cause of anxiety or depression. Um, these are very multifactorial um, problems and there are many different possible causes. However, it just means that candida should be a consideration. 
can also see uh, many uh, immune system problems with candida, allergies, very sensitive to different chemicals, overall poor immune system function. And we'll get into exactly why that is later on in this presentation. The associated conditions or perhaps other diagnoses someone with candida may get on um, PMS, sensitivities to chemicals or other allergens, hormonal issues, there might be issue with cortisol, estrogen, thyroid hormone, skin conditions, eczema, psoriasis, or vitiligo. If I see one of those, you have to consider candida. Again, irritable bowel syndrome that might have been diagnosed or digestive symptoms in general. However, just because someone may have many of the previously mentioned symptoms, that does not necessarily mean that there is a health issue with candida. Claims that candida is the cause of illnesses such as chronic fatigue syndrome or in irritable bowel syndrome, you know, is exaggerated. There are other causes for these multifactorial processes. So we want to consider candida. We want to recognize what it is and how damaging it can be. But we don't want to go overboard and say that 90% of chronic illness is caused by candida. And we get this a lot in the world of natural health where certain books, websites, and health gurus will often promote one issue as the cause of illness. You know, you will also see this um, with people writing about thyroid issues, adrenals, food allergies. They may single out a hormone such as progesterone, estrogen balance, or testosterone. Even people will claim that eating cooked foods is the sole cause of most chronic illness. And you can go to any bookstore and go to the health section and pick out a book explaining um, how any one system is the cause of numerous health problems and kind of trying to convince people that all they need to do is work on this one thing and everything's going to go away. Now, in, in real life, when you're working with real people, it's not that simple. So are these um, experts who go out and promote just one single system as the cause for most chronic illness correct? Well, yes or no. Often, you'll find that these people are putting um, focus on a problem that has been ignored by mainstream medicine. So um, conventional medicine will not treat candida. Or unless it's like very, very bad, it also will overlook many um, instances of hypothyroidism. So someone comes out with a book and says all these problems are caused by candida or all these problems are caused by hypothyroidism or all these problems are caused by you having low testosterone. There will be some people who pick up that book and follow the advice and they're going to feel a lot better because, yeah, for them that is the problem. But we can't just project these single issues onto everyone. So candida is a big problem, but it's not the cause of chronic illness. I don't want people to take this presentation and come up with that conclusion because there are websites or certain people in natural health who will make that claim that candida is the cause of 90% of chronic illness. And that absolutely is exaggerated. You know, you know, often we're living in a world where people want, need to promote their website, they need to promote their book, and what you end up getting is a message that, kind of leaves the impression that fixing just one problem is going to be a panacea for everything and that's simply not how the body works. The bottom line is that candida is a huge problem which is underappreciated in conventional medicine. Addressing candida is an important part in helping many people with numerous sorts of health concerns. However, candida is not a modern plague which is solely responsible for 90% of chronic illness. There are various ways to diagnose candida. There are candida questionnaires, which can be helpful. It's not objective information like a lab test, but you know those are a good starting point, and I'll provide a link to a candida questionnaire below. There are blood tests, like looking for ant candida antibodies. There are um, stool cultures, and it's called functional stool tests, that uh, are very useful. And that's the type of thing that you're more likely to get by going to a holistic doctor, or a naturopathic doctor, or so someone else in my field. And another really simple test that I have people do an awful lot is the candida spit test. 
And all the Candida spit test is, the first thing you do in the morning is you spit in a clear glass of water. Then every then 15, 30 minutes later, 45 minutes later, you look back at the glass of water to see if there's any like strings in it. And if you see white strings in it, then that's positive for Candida. If the water is clear, then that's negative for Candida. You know, and many times I've done this with clients who I've also done um, stool cultures with. And the Candida spit test, you know, really is um, for something surprisingly simple, pretty accurate. And the last thing on my list is practitioner assessment. That's going over your history with a practitioner, looking over symptoms, looking over overall health history. And often based upon that, an experienced practitioner will have a pretty good idea if Candida is a problem or not. It is very important to go through history, although it is preferable to get some sort of objective information. Nonetheless, these sort of um, tests for candida should be used primarily to confirm a suspected diagnosis. It shouldn't be that you go in and the doctor has no idea what's going on and just gives random tests to try to find something. So what causes candida overgrowth? Well, this gets back to a whole debate over is it the milieu or is it the terrain of the individual that allows an infection to um, really um, get into the body, or is it the pathogen itself? In conventional medicine, often infection is treated as the cause of illness without much regard to the person who is being infected. So treatment is basically to treat the bugs, not the person. Uh, more times than not, for example, antibiotics will be prescribed for a specific type of infection rather than a doctor taking a holistic assessment of a patient and prescribing an antibiotic that makes sense for that patient. And if this doesn't make sense now, then it should make sense by the end of this presentation that I'm giving. In natural health, there are going to be instances where we will also give a specific herb or some supplement for a specific type of infection. But more often than not, it is a person that is being treated, not the infection. So, for example, if someone's coming down with a cold, they can take echinacea. Echinacea is not specific for a cold. It's specific to help people's immune system overcome the cold. So, generally speaking, conventional medicine says treat the infection, while natural medicine says let's treat the person and help the person's body overcome the infection. So this is a very old debate. There's Louis Pester's um, famous so-called last words where he said Bernard is right. Bernard was a colleague of his who was putting more focus on the individual being infected and not the pathogen itself. But supposedly Louis Pester said Bernard is right. The pathogen is nothing. The terrain is everything. Uh, but realistically, both are factors that need to be considered. If a very weak or organism can take advantage of a compromised host, then we really need to work on that compromised host. Yet there are very strong organisms that can kill even the most strong people. But nonetheless, in, with candida, it is something which should be a normal gut you know, fungus. It's not something which in a strong host and a healthy person is going to go out of control. So if there is appreciable candida overgrowth, I can almost guarantee you that on some level you have a susceptible host. You have someone whose immune system is not able to eradicate the candida. And this is why often trying to kill off candida with harsh herbs such as oregano oil or simply starving it off with the candida diet often does not work as a monotherapy because these types of therapies do absolutely nothing in, in terms of correcting the root cause of candida infection. Well, candida diet, yeah, that can do a little bit. But for the most part, these really aren't working on a deep level to fix the problem, which is allowing the candida overgrowth. This does not mean that the above treatments are not an important part of an overall plan. Often they are. If candida is out of control, you're going to want to take something like oregano oil to kill it off. And you absolutely have to stick with some type of candida diet because if you're just eating junk food that's feeding the candida, you're really sabotaging anything the immune system is going to do to try to get rid of it. So I'm not saying not to do these things, but we have to be realistic about why is it that so many people will do these candida protocols for so long and still have very... Um, you know, 
uh, underwhelming, you know, results. It's like they're still dealing with the candida. So we need to look at the predisposing factors that can lead someone to being susceptible to candida. Um, low hydrochloric acid from the stomach, need for digestive enzymes, poor diet can definitely um, be a big causal factor. Uh, it, correcting the diet is often not going to be enough to get rid of candida. It does for some people, and if that's, if that's your case, then fine. The candida diet got rid of candida. I'm not saying that it never happens, but we have to be honest when there are many people who follow the candida diet strictly for a long time, for years, and they still have candida. Um, poor immunity, other infections, is something else hindering immune system activity. So the immune system is too busy doing other stuff, so it can't really take care of candida. Or is immune system function really um, suppressed? What about nutritional de deficiencies? Medications, especially antibiotics. People will, you know, we have people, you know, I call them antibiotic junkies, where they're basically dependent on antibiotics. They take them every couple of months or every year for this and that. And what happens is over time, the antibiotics can completely decimate whatever type of normal gut flora they have. And, you know, it really, um, it disrupts immune system function. It, it does a lot of damage. And these people, um, besides uh, having to get off of antibiotics, really have to do a lot of work to repair the gut flora beyond taking just probiotics. Um, poor liver function, liver and gallbladder work together for detoxification, but also production of bile is very important to keeping a healthy digestive tract. Gut dysbiosis, what other type of um, organisms are living in the digestive system that shouldn't be there? Um, those can be a big problem, things like Klebsiella, Citrobacter. There are lots of dysbiotic organisms, and heavy metal toxicity we'll get into shortly. The key point is that if someone is suffering with several of these predisposing factors, it's often not going to be enough to simply take some great candida supplement to kill the candida and expect it to go away. It might reduce the candida, it might improve symptoms, but this is why people go on and on with the candida symptoms despite doing many right things to treat it. Uh, in terms of treatment, one factor that practitioners might be aware of, but maybe most people aren't, when they, they just go out to find a great candida supplement, is that you might have a really good herb for candida, but it may not be a good herb for everyone with candida. For example, um, temperature, some herbs are very warming, some are very cooling. And so, for example, herbs with berberine, which is great for candida, you know, if that's very cooling and you have someone with a very cold constitution, it just might make them feel worse. And likewise, if you give something very warming to someone with a very warm constitution, it's not the right herb for them. So people who practice herbal medicine might be aware of many of these factors, whereas if you just kind of run out to the health food store and you get some rather can random candida supplement, it may not be a very good match for you, even though it's a good supplement. Also, some herbs are very caustic and can irritate the digestive tract. Oregano and grapefruit seed extract, for example, are very irritative. So these should at least be taken with soothing herbs such as marshmallow, aloe, or DGL licorice, you know, in some people, because if there's a lot of inflammation in the digestive system, which many people can do to have, then you might not be really getting the body healthy. It might just be irritating the digestive system. Now, everything that gets through the digestive system goes straight to the liver for detoxification. And if you start killing off candida, the liver has to be able to handle all the toxic byproducts and compounds that's being released as the candida dies. And if it can't, then you get a detoxification or it's called a Herxheimer reaction. During such a reaction, people will often feel very tired or fatigued. But the one thing that really gives it away is when I ask someone, hey, do you feel like you're drunk? And they say yes. Well, then that's a real giveaway for a Herxheimer reaction if it happens after someone is doing some type of candida detox. And in these situations, then you really need to step back and work on the liver and overall detoxification or else you're really not going to get through um, the process.
Unfortunately, some people have such poor liver function that they can't even get rid of candida. If they take some herbs, they just get so sick. And then eventually they get to the point where they say, oh, I won't do this, I won't do that. And they're very hard to treat. Often these will be um, people who take a lot of antibiotics. So uh, I've seen this combination numerous times. There's a lot of antibiotics. The digestive system is in such bad shape that when you start doing anything to normalize gut flora, you start killing off so many things that just makes the person very sick. And, you know, these sorts of situations, you really tend to work closely with someone to um, get detoxification going and then to slowly work on getting rid of candida. You can't just jump in there or else... Um, you get really sick, but many times people just will refuse to do things that they really need to do out of fear of getting sick. So you have to work slowly and build up confidence that you're not going to get sick provided you do enough of the right things to support liver and detoxification. Candida and heavy metals. Candida has been found to actually absorb metals such as mercury. In some situations, candida appears to be the body's best attempt at sequestering metals. We do want to look at the symptoms the body produces as the logical response to environmental challenges. Our bodies want to be healthy. Our bodies are always working on being healthy. So, and many times the symptoms we have is actually the body's attempt to, be, to maintaining health. So in some circumstances, the body may actually let candida overgrow because it rather deal with the toxic byproducts of candida than mercury. You know, these people need to go through detoxification and you need to get rid of candida. It's a larger case, but this is one reason why in some people, they will do everything for candida. And no matter what, nothing has an effect. And that's because their body and its you know, innate intelligence is holding on to candida because it doesn't have a better way of dealing with the heavy metal problem. This is not every candida case by any means, but it is something that can happen. Candida immunity and liver function, the vicious cycle. Um, this is basically candida making candida infection even worse. Um, basically, we start off with candida in the gut. The candida will make yeast byproducts that disrupt liver function. The liver has an important role in immune system function, besides making bile, which disinfects the GI system, between making um, cytokines for the immune system. Without the liver, the immune system can't function. What happens is the toxic byproducts made by candida disrupt liver function, so the liver's role in the immune system is compromised. Because the liver's role in the immune system is compromised, that just depresses immunity and ca causes candida overgrowth to get worse. The worse the candida overgrowth is, the more toxic byproducts disrupt liver function, the less the liver can function, and the more candida overgrowth there is. So this is a vicious cycle where candida messes up, how the body's functioning, which leads to more candida problems. And, you know, in these situations, again, you have to work on the liver, but you also need to work on boosting immune system function. And again, taking certain herbs um, that just kill off candida, you know, those are very helpful, but they're not necessarily the things that people need to do to rebuild the immune system. Besides suppressing immune system activity through the liver, there are other ways that candida overgrowth can cause more candida overgrowth. Um, through nutritional deficiencies, as candida is affecting digestive system function. Also, when you disrupt the digestive system, you can get leaky gut, and that can lead to food allergies, which is going to be a whole other burden on the immune system and cause more irritation in the digestive tract and just maybe lead to conditions that allow candida to overgrow even more. You can also get endocrine imbalances, um, such as estrogen can increase as candida disrupts liver function. The liver is unable to detoxify excess estrogen. You can get relatively high estrogen to progesterone ratios. You can get PMS. Also, all this is going to be a major stress on the body. This is going to disrupt cortisol, the body's major stress hormone made by the adrenal glands. When cortisol gets thrown off, you're throwing off the immune system. This cortisol and adrenal function and the stress response really have a profound effect on how everything in the body works. So candida can just lead to so many different problems with, with disrupt how we feel in so many different ways. 
Now, a little bit more on the adrenals. Prolonged stress of any sort can lead to high cortisol and eventually low cortisol as the adrenals just become exhausted. And this is any stress. By definition, stress is the body's response to any additional demand. So any additional demand can cause this, and candida overgrowth is an additional demand on the body. Now, often people might come in to me not looking for help with candida, but help looking for help because they feel so tired and their adrenals are shot. But upon closer examination, there's a digestive problem. What's happening is problems in the digestive system, including candida, are push, putting such a big burden on the adrenals that their stress response isn't there and they feel exhausted. So if candida is behind all this, taking adrenal supplements isn't going to help. People need to take adrenal supplements, but in addition to that, you have to work on candida. And doing both of those things is the way to get through this type of adrenal fatigue that has a candida component to it. Of course, um, adrenal fatigue can be caused by many other factors besides candida. A, a, a larger intake needs to be um, done in order to find out what the cause is. Often, because candida is an opportunistic infection, people who have candida will have other types of opportunistic infections in the digestive tract. Blastocystes is very common, H. pylori, other parasites, worms, dysbiotic bacteria such as Citrobacter, Klebsiella, and more, other types of fungus besides candida albicans, and all this is leading to inflammation and leaky gut. So we have to think kind of think beyond candida, and it's not just about killing candida off, it's about getting rid of all of these things. Often more holistic practitioners, such as naturopathic doctors, will give patients stool tests to look at digestive system function. A stool test can look directly for candida, it can look for parasites and those other dysbiotic organisms, but it can also look for things such as secretory IgA, which is an important marker of immune system function in the digestive tract. You can also look for inflammatory markers such as alpha antichymotrypsin and intestinal lysozyme. So these tests can be used to much more precisely diagnose exactly what is going on in the digestive tract and also used to guide treatment and to confirm that treatment has been successful. Uh, and the, there are numerous of these sort of tests available from labs such as Diagnostech, Metametrics, Doctor's Data. Uh, but this is one reason why it might be helpful to work with a practitioner instead of just um, trying one various digestive system um, product after another. Because you might be doing the right product, but it might not be enough. You, there may be other factors that need to be considered. Okay, so after going through all these factors in this presentation, let's kind of talk about what a comprehensive candida protocol really would look like. What sort of plan could you expect to get if you're working more closely with a practitioner? Well, first, there's going to be a lot of time spent on identifying those predisposing factors, whether it's antibiotics or birth control pills, other medications, heavy metal problems, hormonal imbalance, digestive function. Everyone is different. Not everyone needs the same candida protocol. And I think that's the main point of this um, presentation, that if you have this chronic candida problem, instead of looking for the perfect candida supplement or the perfect candida protocol for candida, you have to step back and look at, okay, what does your body need? What's the perfect candida protocol for you specifically? Uh, and it can be these predisposing factors. It might be something else which has happened in history that it, I didn't even list. Um, these are the most common factors, but if I see something else in history which says I should go in that direction, then that's the direction that I'm going to go into. You know, for example, sometimes you might have a lot of psychological stress. I, okay, occasionally, I'll have someone come in, and there's all these digestive factors going on, but then they talk about their life and the stress and all that, and the first thing that I have to do is help their body de deal with the stress, because um, psychological stress inhibits digestive system function. Psychological stress inhibits immune system function. And if all that stuff is suppressed by the stress response, then their body isn't going to recover. 
Um, doesn't happen all the time. Rarely will I go in that direction, but that's an example of how maybe something may come up in history that says, okay, we have all these other things to work on, but something else is of primary importance in this person at this time. And then once you have the body deal with the stress, then you can have a much easier time working on detoxification and, and killing things in the digestive tract that need to be killed off. The candida diet is essential. You People really need to follow this. No simple sugars, no milk and dairy, no foods with yeast such as cheese, peanuts, and dried fruit. I can tell you from experience, I've had people who are making great progress and then a holiday comes, they go on vacation, they decide they can let go for a couple of days or a week and drink some beer and they come back and their systems, their symptoms just go back and then it's like we have to rewind back to where they were a month earlier or two months before and kind of start some things all over again. Um, Candida diet by itself is something that I'm critical of because people can do it for 5, 10, 20 years on the candida diet and if that's all that they're doing without fixing these other predisposing factors they're not getting healthy. But if you're feeding candida, if you're giving the candida the sugar and the dairy that it feasts on, then you're really going to be compromising any um, other attempts to get rid of it. So candida diet is part of an overall protocol. It's not the overall protocol. Also along with the candida diet is eliminating food allergens. A food may not may seem to be okay on the candida diet, but if that person is having an allergic response to that food, then you have to get rid of that as well. Whatever type of nutritional support someone needs, they need to take that. If you're, for example, low in vitamin D, take it. Or if vitamin A is underappreciated, then there's a need for that. Whatever type of nutritional issue there is, you really need to address that. You need to address nutritional deficiencies, possibly being low on minerals. Some people have acid-base balance off. In, in those um, cases, you can get pH paper and do a morning urinary pH. And if you're very acidic in the morning, then correcting that can be helpful in candida um, cases. But wherever the person needs support, that's where it needs to be given. Immune system support, things, supplements to rebuild the immune system, and of course detoxification support, which I've spoken about a lot already. Probiotics are great. They're very important. Two things about them. First of all, if candida is very bad, you may not want to take a lot of some probiotics because the stuff in the probiotics may actually start to feed candida, so taking more probiotics can be reserved for later in the case. Also, you're not going to probiotic your digestive system back to health. Probiotics do not do a good job at reseeding the gut with healthy um, bacteria. Basically, the uh, probiotics are a way of modulating immune system activity. Probiotics work on the immune system, not by reseeding the gut. Uh, th that's a bit of a um, myth out there, and it's repeated over and over again. I, I've been at lectures. That's kind of what I was taught in naturopathic school, that probiotics will reseed the gut, and then eventually, you know, someone comes out and says, hey, that's not really what the research is showing. Probiotics are uh, modulating the immune system. They go in, and then they go out. If you stop taking the probiotics, then you stop getting the effect. If probiotics really reseeded the gut, you would only take it for a couple of weeks, and then you wouldn't have to take it anymore. If you are one of these people who is taking tons of probiotics for year after year after year, it's time to step back and look at these other factors. If 50 billion pro strains don't work, then taking 500 billion is not necessarily going to work. Taking 500 trillion is not necessarily going to work. You really need to take a holistic approach. And unfortunately, there are some people out there where they'll take some probiotics and might help a little bit, so they start taking more and more and more, and it doesn't end. And, and you, you also need to take enough. That there are some people who try to yogurt their way to health and, and, and so forth. Um, it's These things help, but if there's one major theme to this presentation, it's that we don't want to turn part of the entire story into the entire story. So I'm no, I don't want to speak against probiotics or certain yogurts if those are helpful. If they, they help, fine. Do it, but 
don't turn it into the single therapy. Maybe for someone else, that's all that they did and they got better. If that's their case, then that's great. But that doesn't mean that because one of these products was the cure for someone else, that's going to be the cure for you. Everyone is different. There are many different antifungal agents out there, berberine or oregano oil, caprylic acid, garlic, wormwood, um, black walnut. There's, the list goes on and on and on. Sometimes people will go on a quest looking for the perfect anti-candida, anti-fungal supplement. So they'll try one supplement with oregano oil, then they'll try another one with oregano oil, and they go on and on and on. If killing off the candida doesn't work, please step back and take a more holistic approach. That being said, often I will rotate these products. I won't just use the same one because um, the issue is not just killing off candida, it's working on everything in the digestive tract, and usually people just don't have candida, they have other things. So you're going to take, you know, one of these supplements may help with certain things there, another one may help with others. So I, I often do rotate, but I never have really had a case where all I did was give someone like oregano oil and that just killed everything off and they did not need to work on the immune system or work on detoxification or work to, on the hormones. There's usually some other factor. If there's a type of case where all someone needs to do is take oregano oil, then they're probably not going to go and see a practitioner. They're probably not watching this video. They probably got rid of it already. Um, homeopathics and isopathics. Um, the, there are other ways of working on the immune system besides um, just taking these type of antifungal agents. Homeopathy can be a great way of modulating how the body you know, is functioning and getting the body to work on healing itself. Um, isopathics are you know, a different type of therapy where Minute amounts of different types of fungus, um, like um, Rocafurti, which is the fungus they make blue cheese out of. Um, these are, certain supplements are made out of this, and it actually works on modular immune system activity to get very um, powerful effects. You know, but to get into a lot of detail on the actual use of homeopathics and isopathics would um, be a whole other video. It can be much more advanced, and it's the type of thing that's really people should go to a practitioner for rather than necessarily trying to find a great product online whereas I think um, maybe looking for a probiotic or finding some type of oregano oil product that's a little bit easier for some a lay person to just go online and find a company that's selling a good product. There's just a lot of things that need to be individualized with homeopathics or isopathics and I'm really um, bringing this up because um, there are certain things that a um, natural health care practitioner might be aware of or use that um, you're not commonly going to find at the health food store. Um, so there are other things out there for really tough cases. So really the final goal of a comprehensive candida treatment plan is to get the person healthy and also to get rid of candida. If I'm working with someone, the goal is not to manage candida. The goal is to see a deeper, more permanent change. It's not the type of thing that just happens in a month from taking some oregano oil and probiotics. But if you go through a more comprehensive plan, you can get healthy instead of just having to manage a problem long term. Now, of course, managing candida with oregano oil or berberine and probiotics is a lot better than just letting candida run wild. But it might be possible to do more than just long-term management. Because honestly, people who are managing candida long-term like that, the candida doesn't go away. They, will have, they won't have the candida for a year or two years. They'll have the candida their entire life. People will come into my office at 50 years old with candida, and we go through the health history, and when did it start? Well, when they were two years old, when they had ear infections, or when they were a child. Uh, so candida doesn't just go away. You have to take control of your health and you have to make it go away. You make it go away by changing your body, changing the terrain, so that candida does not have the opportunity to overgrow. I'm not putting here at the end a candida protocol of what supplements to take, not because I'm trying to hoard the information, but because honestly I wouldn't even know what that is. Everyone 
is different. Everyone needs a unique plan. So if I could put up a great protocol that's going to help some people, it might be totally irrelevant for someone else. Um, so that the whole real message here is individualize what's going on, take a holistic assessment, whatever that person needs to get healthy, that's what you want to do in conjunction with doing some of the more obvious things like taking vitamin D or taking probiotics or taking oregano oil. And in doing that, then you can really um, get some deeper um, permanent change. And that's it. I hope this presentation has been helpful. And if you have any questions on Candida or anything I mentioned, you can just send me an email and I'll try to do my best to answer it. Okay, bye.